It's day two of Subsea 2020 and I'm on the We Subsea stand with Global MD Jason Wilson. Jason, lovely to see you today. You, you were telling me a really interesting story about the trends around Subsea Expo. Can you tell us a bit about your 2018-2019 transition? Yeah, 2018 was quite an unusual year for us. Um, the actual um, projection for the year was much better than expected. Um, we're unsure why, to be honest. We've spoke to a lot of people, people in the industry um, and they didn't see the same, it wasn't the same trend, but for us uh, it was quite a significant uh, increase in turnover and revenue for the company um, and we finished the year very strong. Coming in 2019 we, we didn't see the same, um, it was a bit slower start to the year, though the year was still very good, it wasn't quite the same as 2018, um, but it was still a very good year. We think maybe just 2018 was quite a to keep that level of turnover and revenue would have been quite quite difficult. We think it may have been down to, we were we kind of looked into it, maybe some extra IRM work that maybe had been put off before and been done late, but we are unsure. Um, it was just one of those things where it would have been um, a spike in the in the in the in the in the, in the, in the industry, we don't know. Yeah. But nothing that would cause any real concern, you're still seeing a lot of optimism across the market? Yeah, we've seen the same. Uh, 2019, we still executed almost the same amount of projects, um, for, just for slightly less revenue. There was just a small slip back. It wasn't significant and it was still an exceptional year, um, but it was, it was a slight drop back. Um, well, that's, that's really honest of you and I really appreciate having that kind of candour from you. There's so many great things happening in the industry just now that it's sometimes hard to be realistic about expectations. So that, that's yeah. fantastic to hear. Do you think that 2020 is going to open up any new doors or present any new opportunities or challenges for you? Yeah, we are, we're starting to look globally. So my role changed actually last year. I was UK Managing Director mm -hmm. and I became the Global Managing Director. So the plan for this year is to start looking at uh, other markets, other areas we can go into. We have, we have some good relationships with some partners and some global locations, but we're looking to do some of that more on our own or be a bit more involved anyway in those locations and those markets. So we're starting that now, possibly some announcements to do in the coming weeks on some of that as well. Um, but a few things in the pipeline to, to look at. But otherwise, we see it's pretty much in such the same year for um, the UK market. We don't see any change there at the moment. We're starting to see some customers that um, we, I don't think we quite lost, but maybe had gone somewhere else for equipment or whatnot returning. So that's starting to tre a trend. And some long term projects as well. At the moment, we've got two um, 18 month projects out just left this year. And we're seeing a few more like that, which is unusual. It's normally sort of, you know, shorter term projects. So those are quite good to have as well. That's fantastic to hear. Um, is there anything upcoming in your future strategy that is unique or different? I don't think unique or different. We have always had a strong product and what we have. Um, we're the market leader in dredging technology. We're quite unique in the way when the com company was formed um, that we built our own computer program, which allows us to uh, develop and, and obviously look at our equipment quite closely um, and, and what we have for each project if we want to, um, which is pretty unique. And we'll still keep working that way. The reliability of the equipment as well has been key to our success. So that's 10 years now um, with zero mechanical failures, which I don't think is unmatched, you know, or matched by anybody, by anybody else in the industry, given the equipment and the harsh environment it works in. So that's a, that's a good point. You've just reminded me. It's your 10-year anniversary this year. Congratulations. That lever of longevity over the recent downturn is, is, is laudable in, in the extreme. Is there any lessons that you've learned over the last 10 years that you think could help other companies to build and grow throughout the next phase of this developing industry? I think the main one's flexibility. Yeah, we're quite we're not a big company, so flexibility is fairly easy for us over some of the obviously bigger companies that are out there. Flexibility, looking at the markets and, and working with partners as well, collaborations work as well can be quite good. But that, the main focus is flexibility. Keep an eye on what the market's doing, um, adjust and adapt. But I think don't change the company's focus as well. I think that's the main thing. The quality and reliability is always what we focused on and we've kept that and we haven't even the times when you know revenue generated from the equipment has dropped dramatically, the quality hasn't and that's very important to us. I absolutely couldn't agree more. I think that dedication of purpose and understanding your product is probably one of the greatest skill sets any business leader can have. So thank you so much thank for your you. time today. I wish you the best for 2020 and I look forward to speaking with you again. Thank you.